The December 2025 release of Home Assistant, the last release of this year, is now out. So let's get right into what's new. So Home Assistant is closing out the year with a release that gives you more control and a little bit of magic. So let's get right into some of the details here. So the first thing I want to talk about is the labs. So if you go into Home Assistant and you use the C shortcut and click on or start typing lab, you'll be taken to the Home Assistant labs. This is a preview of new features that they're working on. They will, uh, they're stable, they fully function, uh, but they may not be fully complete or all of the features that they want to add to them. They're still working on the design and approach based on our feedback. So uh, also to note, preview features may change or be replaced based on feedback, future releases, et cetera. So there's two that they've included in the 2025 uh, December release. The first one is purpose specific triggers and conditions. We'll talk about that in a minute. The other is called winter mode. And all this does is adds falling snow, snowflakes on your screen, gives you a little bit of a wintry effect. All you have to do is click and enable. Now, when you enable something from labs, it will ask you if you want to make a backup before actually enabling something. Probably a good idea, just in case whatever this lab thing is breaks everything. But remember, it is fully tested uh, before they release it. So into labs anyway. So let's go ahead and I'm not going to do that. My last backup was four hours ago, so I'm good there. So I'm just going to enable it and you'll immediately see what happens here. You start to see falling snowflakes on your screen. Now this applies to every single home assistant dashboard that you have or home assistant screen that you have up and running. So over here on my right, which you can't see over here on my right, I can't even show you is a, a tablet and this tablet immediately started having the snowflakes falling on it as well. If you want falling snowflakes, there you go. And then just as easy to disable it as that by pushing the button and the way it goes. So that's the first new feature that they've released in the December, 2025 uh, edition of home assistant. So the winter wonderland is nice. It's just a UI overlay that puts snowflakes on your screens. However, the big thing they've released in the labs this time is this perfect purpose specific trigger and conditions. What this does is enables new purpose specific triggers and conditions that are more user friendly than technical state based options. So if you click on the learn more button here, it'll take you to the blog post that talks about it. So two years ago, they released the new automation editor that unwrapped all of the actions and made them easier to understand. So for example, instead of turning on uh, or instead of using a single obscure call service action, they now have things like light, turn on, media player, set volume, etc. So they wanted to know if they could do this for triggers and conditions, and they have. So they put all this together using that lab option. So it's off by default. You need to enable it if you want to use it. So if we go over in here and we go to automations, and I create a new automation over here. So looking at this, I'm going to add a trigger. And you have two options here. You have targets and you have triggers. So I could trigger on a light. And if let's say a light was turned on. And the neat thing about this is that you can see different uh, targets here. So if I click a target here, I can go to an entity or a device or an area or label. So for example, I've created a label and added holiday light labeling to all of my lights. So if I click on that, if any of the holiday lights turn on, then I will do an action here. So I'll click the action and I'll go to action. And even you could even do something like target, right? So let's say I wanted to do something like if the holiday lights turn on, I want to turn on um, some lights or my lamp here in the bedroom. So I want to turn on that right there. So there is a very, very, very simple way to do some actions um, using this new format that they've come up with in the lab. It makes it very simple to do purpose specific triggers and conditions. Now what they've done also in this release is they've done more dashboard improvements. So if you go into your dashboards and you look at the, let me get to the dashboard section here, you can set a home dashboard. Now, when you set this home dashboard, what will happen is the home dashboard will apply to every single device in your home assistant uh, in ecosystem. So if I decided I wanted to make this 
and actually I just come over here and right click on it. Let me get out of the way again, or click on these dots. I can set this as my default dashboard. Now, if I do this, it's gonna change the default dashboard for everybody. So you've gotta be careful that you do this, or when you do this. So it will say, it will be shown to all users when opening Home Assistant, each user can change this in their profile. So I'm a little, uh, and this is a little strange to me because you're basically going in there and for my wife's phone, I have a specific dashboard for her. I've got a specific dashboard for my daughter. When I change this, what it makes it seem like is that their dashboards are going to be completely whatever I choose. And that, that kind of interferes with the acceptance factor criteria. So I don't want to make this change, but it is an option for you to do that. You can always go down into your profile and you can change your default dashboard. If I can find it here. Where's the default dashboard? You can change the default dashboard to whatever other one you want to use here and you can put it back. But that means me changing it to default for every device and then they have to go back and change it to their original one. That's a, a yet another feature that they've added to this version of Home Assistant. They've also done another thing where you can actually reorder the, the area. So if you look at the Home Dashboard, let me, let me go to Dashboards again. I'll take you to the Home Dashboard. And we look at the home dashboard here. I have all of these areas and actually I'm going to go to the home dashboard on my production one. So here's my home dashboard and I have all of these areas defined in here. And be, by default, they're, I believe they're alphabetical. So what I need to do, I'm going to go back here to settings and then I'm going to go down here to areas, labels, and zones. And then I want to click on, here we go. Let me get out of the way. Click on the three dots, the overflow here, and reorder floors and areas. So now what I can do is, let's say I want the outside to be at the top. So I'll take the front yard, put it up here, and I'll take the backyard, wherever that is. Or here's another outside. We'll put those back both at the top. Keep going. That's a little weird. We'll just drag it up to the top. So if I save that now, you'll see here that the areas show up in the order I put them. And if I go back to the home dashboard, the areas also will show up in the order that I put them. So now my two outside are first and you know, everything else is where it was. The other thing they've done is they've created this little section over here called for you. So what they're saying is that they added that new sidebar. Now I thought sidebar was on the left-hand side, but sidebar is also what they're calling it. the thing I just showed you. It's added to the home assistant dashboard or the home dashboard. So only on this home dashboard will you see it, but this is the sidebar they're talking about. These are things they feel are most useful to you. And speaking of dashboards, let's talk about editing a dashboard. So I'm gonna go to uh, one of my dashboards here. I'll just go back out and get to my dashboard. When I click on edit over here and I edit the dashboard, if I come down here and I add a card, I'm just gonna pick a random card here, it doesn't matter what, just something like this. And I click on that and I add it to my home assistant and I'm gonna add a second card, just some random card. Let me just go down here and pick this one, just add it on there. And now I have two cards I've added. And let's say I did a bunch of work on the dashboard and it just, it doesn't work and I can't figure out how I got back to or how I got to this point, I don't like it anymore. Well, now they've added a feature to be able to undo up to 75 changes you made to your dashboard. So if I click the undo button one time, it should remove the last thing I did, which was that uh, forecast card. And if I click it again, it's gonna remove this card I just stuck on here. And now you'll notice that there's nothing up here except, or nothing to go back to because all the changes I've made are now undone. So it's a very quick and easy way for you to be able to make a bunch of changes on your dashboard without fear of completely destroying it. Now, if we go into the integer energy monitoring part of the Home Assistant setup here, they have made some changes to energy monitoring as well. So here's the energy dashboard. So one of the things they've added is the ability to look at power in real time. So under this power sources thing, if you go over here and edit the dashboard and you add a power source, right here, add power, it's a power sensor. If you add a power sensor, and I've already added one. Now I have an Emporia Energy device that provides all the measurements for this. Um, let me show you. Provides the, the measurements for the 
uh, energy here for this, and then the real time once a minute average energy usage. That allows me to get grid consumption, but it also allows me to get near real time grid power. So when you look at the dashboard, if you've added something under the power sensor section, you'll end up with a power sources graph, and then you'll end up with this now. I don't believe the now shows up here unless you actually have a power sources or power sensor. And this power sources is on this page, but also can be uh, shown here. And it'll give you your real time power usage. If you have other things besides just the grid, like if you have wind power or solar power or something else, it will show you input output on this graph, just like um, it does in the other sections of the energy portal, but it'll show you the real time stuff going on. And I'll just show you an example on their webpage because they have more stuff than I do. In this case, they have solar, grid, and battery. You can see that the, uh, the grid power is here. The solar is ramping up here during the day. And then you see the battery usage being consumed during this p uh, part of it, some of it down here too. It's all about scaling here. But anyway, this is what it could look like if you have multiple uh, energy sources or power sources that you can put in there under that power sensor section. And back on the summary page, you also have, or on the energy page rather, you, uh, you still have the same, uh, is it called the Sankey graph? Here, the Sankey graph gives you the energy flow from the grid. And then if you have your stuff set up by area, it'll actually break down each of these by the area and show you what each area is doing. And this is now also something that they've added for the water card or water consumption. So I have a droplet water consumption device on my water, but it doesn't, it, it does show me some of the sources, but it doesn't really show that in real time. So I'm not able to do a, a Sankey card on this, but I can look at the water usage on the summary page. It's here and it's down here. In 2025-12, 20, they've added the Sankey card for downstream water meters. So you can see your water, your home, your laundry room, what's actually using the water, just like you can for the energy devices. If your water meter or your water sensors report that, you can add those to Home Assistant as well and get the same kind of view that you can get for the energy meters. My water stuff doesn't actually report that, so I don't have the capability. So that's another thing added here into 2025.12. As I mentioned, one of the final things they point out in this release is the the way the energy, the page is laid out where everything is kind of broken down in what they call tabs. If you don't have all the extra stuff like gas and water and everything else, it'll look like it always does. But if you've added water tab, uh, water, uh, energy, everything else, you'll get stuff like this too. I guess this is what they mean by tabs. So each of these is a tab. So you have the summary page, energy page, the water page, and then you have the now page for the real time stuff. So that is the December 2025 release of Home Assistant. Lots of UI improvements and things that help the Home Assistant experience feel better for you based on feedback that you and everyone else in the community has provided to the Home Assistant team. With that, thank you so much for watching. Um, enjoy your holidays if I don't see you before that happens. And uh, we will see you on the next video.